Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Talking Football Podcast. I'm absolutely delighted to say we're joined on the line this week by current Falkirk midfielder, but he's been a very former Dundee United favourite. He played at Hearts, Birmingham City, Cowden Beef, you name it, you name it, he's, he's been around, that's for sure. It's the one and only Margaro Gomez. Margaro, thank you very much for, for coming on the podcast. Uh, no problem. Thank you very much for having me tonight, and um, hopefully we can have a good, uh, good conversation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, looking back at the career, Margaro, and um, you're born in a, a suburb of Paris. Is that right? In 1985, we. we... Uh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was born in a suburb of Paris, a place yeah. called Le Blanc Minil. So it's not far from the Stade de France. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I, I grew up there. Like, I mean, my mum, my family, they still, they still live there. So sometimes when uh, I've got time, I'll just go back home and see them. Yeah, terrific. Were you, were you always playing football as a, a young boy? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I used to play football and uh, boxing as well because I used to oh, watch, uh, <laughs> yeah, Ho- Rocky Balboa, <laughs> all those movies. So like, oh, I used to play football and just pretend to be a boxer as well. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> football was the, the main sport for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but who was your team when you were growing up? Did you po- follow PSG or do you follow anyone uh, else? Yeah, obviously because I'm because I'm from Paris, so I did I did follow PSG because of George Weah and David Ginola. And yeah. I used to be like big players for Paris Saint Germain, and then starting from like '96, I started following Juventus because of yeah. uh, Alexandre Del Piero, and then since then I've been they've been my team like since that, since like '96, so it's been a very long time. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. And um, but you always wanted to be a midfielder, Magaro. Was that always a position that you played? Well, no, no. I start I start playing football with uh, my local team in Paris uh, called CSL Olney, and uh, I always to be a left back. Wow. From a young age, yeah, I was a left back, and then I've, I think when I turned about like maybe eight or nine, one manager asked me if I wanted to to play as a left winger, and I said, yeah, why not? But at that time, that team we had, we had the one centre forward, it was left foot, and we had the left winger was left foot, and they were both the best player in the team. So he told me to go on the on the right wing. So I was playing on the right wing, but I was a left foot. So I kind of enjoyed playing that position, being more attacking, and then. From the age of eleven, I moved to midfielder, and then has been I've been playing in that position since then. Yeah, yeah. I was reading. Did you have a? Were you down at Montpellier as a youth? The day picked you yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. I was at Montpellier at youth uh, from thirteen till fifteen for two years, and uh, probably one of one of the best time, uh, like in terms of like football, because you know yeah. you you more like this. You inside it's just the academy. You train in the morning and afternoon, and then you go you go and like learn obviously education school so it was probably well, yeah, two two years that i really enjoyed and obviously being being there away from home it wasn't easy at the beginning because yeah. montpellier is in the south of france and paris is at the north so i had to leave home basically and you know go and and chase my dream so it wasn't it wasn't easy but I, I really enjoyed it it was a good time yeah, it's funny that we had the uh, armandoni on a few weeks ago and he said that he was at Nantes as a, as a young boy he said it was yeah, at, yeah, he's, he's, I know him. I know, I know him yeah, very well. Yeah, he says it was the best time of his life away there because it, it, it was just like a big club. He really enjoyed it. Was that the same? Do you feel the same? Yeah, it's the same. Nantes, Nantes is one of the big, like one of the biggest clubs in, in France, and yeah. in terms of like academy, the, at that time they were probably one of the best in France. So, yeah. but Montpellier is the same. It's like all the academy in France, they're, they're very good. They, they look after the players like in a very good way. They, they really want you to do well, not just in football, but also at school. Like education is really key. And um, yeah. well, I was there. I was at Montpellier for two years, and they let me go because I wasn't focused at uh, <laughs> like education. Like it's yeah. like yeah, at school it wasn't in the back of my mind. I was like, I just wanted to play football. So yeah. <laughs> they give me a warning the first year. They said you need to focus more about school as well. But I didn't listen. And then the second year, that was me. They just cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> It must have been hard because I mean Montpellier is quite a, a fair distance away from Paris. Was it was it difficult moving away at a young age? Oh uh, yeah, well I'm not gonna lie. I, I used to cry at the beginning when I first when I when I moved. I even when they asked me to sign a deal, I want to. I was like, no. I went on. I went there on try first, yeah. and uh, okay, we want you. So they offered me a deal, but then. I was like to my dad, I don't know if I can do it. I, was, <laughs> I don't want to leave like my family, my friends back home. <laughs> and then I'd say, no, you, you, it's a good thing for you. And then obviously I signed, but then the first two weeks, I was just by myself. Like I didn't talk to anybody. I was just crying, talking to my family every night. And then 
after that, I just said, you know, I need to, I need to man up. Basically, I need to stop. Yeah. Like this, this is a big, this is a big thing for me, and obviously, I need to, to do my best. And after that, I start talking to all everybody at the academy, I start making friends, and then I was fine after that. It was, but yeah, it's a big because you know, you're 13 years old, you're living home, you're living with yeah. your family, with your friends. It's not easy. Like Montpellier is in the south, so it's like by plane. It's, I think it's probably like three hours. Three, yeah, yeah, three, three hours. Yeah, it's a bit of a so I couldn't go home when I wanted to. I, I could only go home when school holiday or my family could come at the weekend sometimes, but it wasn't part of the deal because, because the club had to pay, obviously, compensation for my family to come down. But yeah. uh, they only had, we only had a lot of free flight, I think, like during the year. So, so yeah. Yeah. Then when, you, when you get let go then at 15, what, 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 did, um, what were you thinking then? That you, you made me you look at something else to do? Or did you, you, did you still no, have that dream no. of playing football? I wasn't thinking about anything else. I was just, for me, it was basically the end of the world. I was just crying. I was like, yeah. I can't believe this is happening. Like, and um, yeah, it was it was really difficult. So I had to go back home, basically, go back to to Paris. And um, yeah, well, talking to my family and my agent at the time was looking after me. We we were talking to other clubs, trying to look if we can find another clubs. But it, it was difficult. It was really difficult. Yeah. Yeah, and you came over to uh, the UK when you were you were you were nineteen or what have you? Um, no, no, no. I came before that. I was yeah. um, I was six. No, sorry, I was seventeen when I when I came to no sixteen. Sorry, when I came to yeah. to UK. Yeah, I was I was sixteen years after I left um, Montpellier. I went back to Paris. So it was the summer two thousand. Oh my God, it was a long time. Two thousand one. <laughs> Oh, 2001, yeah. summer 2001, yeah, and um, I didn't, I didn't have a club. I didn't go to, to college or anything for for six months. I was just in my house hiding. Nobody knew oh. that I've been released. Yeah, I, I didn't, I, I just didn't tell any of my friends. The, yeah. And um, so it was a hard time. But then I decided to to move to England because uh, I had family over there in London. So yeah. it was, yeah, it was end of December 2001. And uh, yeah, I just packed my bag and I moved to London. <laughs> yeah. So for a year, all that year, I didn't play football. I didn't play football for any club. Yeah. I went to to college in in London to learn English, and then I started playing football that summer. I signed for Windsor and Leighton. I was yeah. I was only seventeen. Yeah, there were like non like nine division in England, nine or yeah. ten division, Raymond's League in England. So I started from there playing football again. Yeah, wow, yeah, I was looking at the, the clubs you were playing for in, in Britain in the early days, you were at Windsor and Eaton, then you went to um, Dagenham and Redbridge for, for, for a period, but you didn't, didn't play there or something like that, was that right? No, yeah, I went to yeah, Windsor and Eaton, and from there I was, I was there for, for like a, year, a year and a half or something yeah. like that, and at that time that's where I met another Asian who, he was like a scout for Chelsea, Yeah. so when I was like 18, he, he ended up like... Um, talking to, to Chelsea and asking them if they can have a look at me. So I, I went down and tried. I was there for a few months and I remember meeting all the big players there. So it was a, kind of a good time. But then, um, yeah, I signed for that. I'm in a red bridge, but it was a long story because they kind of like lied to me about something and yeah. my agent wasn't happy with it. So I didn't end up staying there. Like, I signed my contract, but I only had one training session and that was me. I refused to go and play for them because they kind of lied to me because my English wasn't good. So they, they were not really honest with me. So... So I had to stop playing for a few months before they cancelled my contract and I had to go back to Windsor and Eton and finish the season with them. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was going to ask you about uh, when you're playing in the, the lower leagues in, uh, in England, uh, the non-leagues, um, how did you find the football? Um, was it? I guess it was a bit different to what you were used to in, in Montpellier yeah, and stuff. It was, yeah, it was hard because um, <laughs> I, was, I was playing as a number 10 before in France. Yeah. So when I moved to England, you look, we in England we don't play as a number ten. We play in four four two, and the two midfielder they're like box to box. You have to run back and uh, attack. And I, I didn't like defending. I, I used to hate it. Uh, I just wanted to attack and go and score goals or set up goals for my teammate. So it was a big high opener for me to change my game to adapt. And um, I, I had to obviously it, it took me a long time to adapt to change my game, but I managed to do it when when I, when I was at Windsor Nathan. So I think it was a good thing for me to go. To go there early and learn that side of football, the I would call it like the the dirty work, you know, like yeah. try to win the football, tackle, win headers. <laughs> I was a, I'm a small guy. I was playing with men. I was like eight, you know, playing with guys who are like 
you know, in the in the thirties, and so it was a it was a good thing for me. Like I think that's why now I kind of enjoy that that side of like that physicality, like they say in, in Scotland or in England, because I'm a small guy, but I'm not scared to put my body. Uh, so yeah. yeah, it was a good a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you moved to Scotland then in, in two two thousand and six, and you joined Cowden Beef. How did all that come yeah. about, Margaro? Well, because uh, Arma only used to play for them, and yeah. we had the same agent, ah. so they. They were in league. I think they were in league two, and they they, they were playing in the playoff to 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 go up, and they managed to to go up to league one, yeah. the league that I am not work up there. They went up, so my agent called Mixu Patalini and he told him that he's got a player that you might like, and then he said, okay, well you can bring him up. So I went there the summer of 2006, joined the World Cup uh, yeah. on trial, called in beef, and um, after you know even like a week, they were they were all happy with me, and they just wanted me to sign. So. I, I was happy. I was like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's yeah. fine. I was happy. Like living in Edinburgh and just play for Cardiff. I was just, just say, why not? Like, yeah, it was good. Yeah, perfect. And uh, Mixu Patalainen was the boss, wasn't he? He was the manager at the time. Yeah, he was. He was the manager, and um, because of the way I, the way his team was playing, we we're playing on the four three three, and uh, yeah. I was. I used to be an attack. Like, I was an attacking midfielder at that time. But Mixu, he said to me, because you're very good on the ball. I want to, I want you to play in front of the defense as a number six. So you start all the move from there, and then I said, okay, you know what? Why not? So I start playing in that position, and I really enjoyed it. We had a really good team. We started the season really strong. If I, I remember that time, like yeah. we were scoring goals for fun. But then Mixu left. He went. I think I went September, October. He went to yeah. Finland to a big club uh, in Finland, and then the new manager came in. So yeah, but then it was a good season. Yeah, uh, I was going to ask as well. I mean, English football and Scottish football. Did you notice a difference between the two? Is it the same sort of physicality? It's, it's, the, it's the same. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the same for me. I don't. I didn't see the big difference. It was just like physical and yeah, like it's really kick and rush, like goes like really fast. <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of, yeah. she didn't, she, there was not a big difference. It was the same. Was yeah. The same. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you spent a few months at Cowden Beef, of course, and then Dundee United come calling. I guess it's one of those moves where. You can't refuse if a club like that stature come in and, and, and want to buy you. Well, yeah, yeah, actually, it was during that time. Yeah, Mixu just left, and we had um, a manager. I think his name was Brian Walsh. He used to play for the United midfielder. Yeah. He came in, and then by that time it was end of end of November. We were in training on a Tuesday night, and um, he called me. Say, look, uh, there's Dundee United. I want you to go and train with them. And I thought he said Dundee first, Dundee FC. I knew, I knew there was two yeah. teams. So inside my head, because I was playing in League One, I thought it would be like Dundee, they're just in the championship. But then he yeah. said, no, 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 it's not Dundee FC, it's Dundee United. And I said, Dundee United Premier League. And he said, yeah. I said, are you joking? <laughs> and he said, no, no. <laughs> I'm not joking. They want you to go and train starting next week. I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, that's fine by me. <laughs> so I called my Asian, and then, yeah, my Asian spoke to, obviously, to Craig Levin and the chairman, I think, at that time. And they said, look, if, if we want you to come and try for a month, and then you do all the training from Monday till Friday, and then on Saturday, you're going to play with Gordon Beef. And then if you do well during that month, then you can win a deal. So I was like, okay, that's fine by me, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, so I went on trial for the whole month I was there. And at the same time, I was playing for Cold and Beef um, during the week. So I, I played four games for Cold and Beef. And I managed to score two goals at that time when I was on trial with yeah. Dundee United. So I had a good try with them and they were happy and they offered me a two-year deal. Yeah, brilliant. And did you notice a step up in standard when you went to Dundee United from Cold and Beef? Yeah, of course, definitely. Like from my first training session, I could see the players, the quality yeah. they had, and I was like, okay, I, I need to, <laughs> I need to hurry up and get to that standard. But I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't out of place. I would say, like, I, yeah. I don't think that, like, I, I was doing well. That's why they, they, they offered me a deal. I think because um, I was playing with players like Barry Robson, Mark yeah. and Well Hunt. They were all, all very good players, but I didn't look out of place and that's why they were from your deal. So it was it was a big I mean a big step up for me, but something that I really enjoyed. Like. Yeah. You mentioned that Barry Robson. You'd also uh, team up uh, for the first time with uh, Prince Boabon as well. Um, how, how how was it playing with uh, these guys? Yeah, no, it was good obviously because Prince just came six months after me. So he came the yeah. I came in January, he came in the summer, the, the season after. So um, I remember when he first came, Craig Levin said, "Look, he's a very good midfielder from Ajax, and I wanted yeah. to look after him." And um, yeah, we just we just click. We were just staying together in the same apartment with some of the other boys, and you could see from day one he had quality, like a very good player, comfortable on the ball, strong at such yeah. a young age, only eighteen, I think, at that time, or 
yeah. online team. But yeah, you could see that quality. And, but there was him, there were so many players. And, you know, was, I, can, I can, like Danny Swanson, Greg Conway, yeah. Scott Watson, so many, so many players. Yeah, absolutely. And Craig Levine, of course, you mentioned was the manager. How, how did you find him as a, as a coach? A very good coach, very, very, very good coach. He, he had a good eye for, you know, to spot like players because was, at that time when I signed, I think Greg Conway was there, but then yeah. the year after, Danny Swanson came, Scott Robertson came, Paul Dixon came, Danny, Danny Granger came. The boys who, who he all signed were like boys who never played the highest level. They were all like yeah. in the lower league. But he, he, they were all young and hungry players who wanted to to get like um, a big move in the future. So yeah. he knew what he was doing. So I think that's why we had, a, we had a really good team, I think, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, we need to talk about the, the pre-season friendly in 2008 against Barcelona. Um, can you remember much about that game, Margaro? I mean, some of the stars he came up against in that yeah, game. Yeah, I, I got, I got, Messi. Yeah, I remember all the games. Those two games were just crazy. I couldn't believe when they said to me that like, pre-season we'll play against Barcelona. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> my family and friends, they, they all wanted to come. But yeah, no, it was, and uh, it was probably one of the best times, you know, playing against against Barcelona. You know, you see those players, Ronaldinho, Thierry Henry, Eto, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was just a yeah, very good, good experience. I still got the video. I watch them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get anybody shot at the end of the game? Uh, the first year I got Lilian Thuram, and the year yeah. after that, I'm not wrong, I think it was um, yeah, yeah, I, I gave them away to some of my friends. Yeah, I didn't yeah. give a shot. I've, I've got lo loads of pictures, though. <laughs> I've got loads of pictures of the game. Yeah, ideal, perfect. And um, of course, the, the 2008 9 season, um, you were involved in that crazy penalty shootout, remember, against Celtic, the Scottish League Cup semi final. Um, yeah, it's Celtic when you're living 10 penalties. What, what, what was that like to play on that, that, that occasion? And uh, I mean, you scored one of your penalties, but it was, it was nothing else that I don't, I don't think I've ever seen before. Such a, I think the goalie scored, the, I think Zalisco yeah, scored. The goal, like yeah, the, goal, the goalkeeper had to take in score. Uh, what we, I, th I think the game wasn't, it wasn't, I think, the best game. It was kind no. of like scrappy. It wasn't the best game. No, there was not a lot of chance. So we, it's like inside our head, we knew that this game was go, was going to go in penalties, but we didn't know it was going to be that long. And you're just thinking, okay, I score mine. That's it. It's finished now. But then you have to go again. Maybe <laughs> start, you start to be nervous, thinking, when are you going to put the second one? You know. And then yeah, I think it's Willow Flood who, who miss. If I'm not yeah. Willow Flood or Yuwoki, someone yeah, I think they missed the penalty and then they managed. But yeah, it was something like 11 penalties. So it was crazy. Yeah, something I never seen before. Yeah. But, yeah. That was crazy. Um, Craig Levine would leave, of course, and, and become the Scotland manager in um, 2009 in December time, I think. Um, were you sad to see him go at the time, Margaro? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, I, I actually didn't want, didn't want him to go. I was like, oh, no. Because he was, he was a manager that like, trusted me from, from day yeah. one. And I never had, I had that trust before when I was young. But in terms of like professional football, that was my first professional you know, contract. And and I was playing week in, week out, and I was enjoying my football with him. So I was kind of scared, thinking, okay, maybe a new manager will come in, and it, maybe he's not going to like me. So, uh, you know, it's football. It's all about opinions. Sometimes a manager comes in, you want, and he, he doesn't like you, and then you, you're out. <laughs> and you, yeah. So by now, I, I was sad to see him go. I think all the players, we were all, we were all sad, but then we we're kind of happy when we knew that Peter Houston, like, yeah. you know, took the job because... He's kind of like he was working with Greg Levin, so he knew all of us. So, so it was a good uh, transition, I think, from 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 Greg Levin to Peter Houston. You know, even yeah, though it was absolutely. difficult, the first game, I think the first game we lost five or six one against Rangers, and that was yeah. Peter Houston as the interim manager. And after the game, he just said he doesn't want the job. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I remember that game. Yeah, we we lost because all, all the players were sad, and we lost that yeah. game. Obviously, Greg Levin just left, but then um, Andy Webster, Lee Walkie, and um, I think it was Sean Dillon and, and Greg Conway, they, they just call us, they just all, we had just had a meeting and we just said we need to, to stop, you know, like being sad about Craig Levine, we need to look forward at what, what can happen in the future. And starting from that meeting, we just never look back, we just, we're yeah. just, we're just on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as well. And of course you reached the, the Scottish Cup final and you beat Ross yeah. County in the final as well. Um, yeah. Can you remember much about the, the, the week leading up to the game, Margaro, and, and playing in the game itself? How, yeah, it was a good, good week, a good preparation, like we always do. But obviously, we I think we stayed two days 
in the hotel before the before the final, so so we can have a good preparation. But the night before the final, because I, I was roommate with, um, with Prince Wab and was with him, I remember mm. during the night Prince couldn't sleep. It was like, do you think we're gonna win the game tomorrow, the final? I was like, yeah, man, don't worry, we are going to win. He said, but. They just beat Celtic, you know. Celtic, the best team in Scotland. <laughs> and I say, yeah, but we we are not gonna lose that game. I say, no, we already lost the final against Manjus a few years back, the League Cup. I was like, now nah, this game we can't, we cannot lose. We have to win. So Prince, I remember, I was a bit nervous. I wasn't nervous. I was fine. I, I think I knew that this this was a turn to to do something special, and and yeah. I'm happy because everybody turned up in that game. Everybody was just like on fire, and we had a good game, and we. We managed to, to score three goals. It was a good, a good, probably the best time in terms of like football, you know, to win something. When you see the fans, they're still talking about it 10 years later. So it's yeah. something great. Yeah. How, how much did you enjoy playing at Hamden, Margaro? I mean, the national stadium, it's a, it's a big pitch and what have you. Can you sort of take in the atmosphere from the, the fans and all that, or does it sort of pass you by? No, yeah, you just take it in. You can see the whole stadium just full. Like, you see the colours of the United, like orange, and you see Ross County blue. It's just beautiful. It's just something that I think any footballer should enjoy when you go and play in the full stadium, more than 50,000 people, you know, just screaming and singing. I think it's something that every player should enjoy, and I definitely did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Of course, David Goodwill, he, uh, scored an absolute beauty, the, the, the first goal. How, how good a player was he? Oh, he was all class. He's still, still a great player, still doing yeah. well uh, for Clyde. But um, yeah, at that time, yeah, he was just unreal. The, the goal that you, you scored that season was just crazy. Was so many good goals. Uh, him and Danny Swanson, and yeah. that is like a special connection on the pitch. Like, the, Danny Swanson would just find him all the time. Now, it was be- beautiful to play. We had a great team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, had that, you, you certainly did. Did you have a sort of good team spirit as well off the pitch, Margaro? Did you also uh, get on off the field? Yeah, yeah. Everybody, like, everybody was cool with each other, and sometimes we used to like we would just go meet, go and meet up outside and go uh, like have dinner or do this yeah. different thing, go go karting or go cinema. We had like we're all young and all good good with each other. Like we go out together, and now it, it was a good good atmosphere. Like we had yeah. good good professional players. Yeah, of course you'd leave in uh, in, in two thousand and eleven in the summer, and um, Birmingham City come calling. And um, how did that move come about? Uh, well, because I was uh, I was at Dundee United for four years, four years and a half, and I was at I was 25, and I've kind of like felt that I've done I've done well enough to earn to 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 earn like another uh, like a, a big move, and yeah. and obviously when you play in Scotland, the next big move is you want to go to England, and obviously when Birmingham came for me, it was just an easy decision. I had I had to go, I had to go, yeah, of course, because I couldn't because they came from they were in the Premier League and they went down to the Championship, so. The target was to go back up, different like to go back up in the Premier League. So it was a big club, so I couldn't say no to that. Yeah, absolutely. Chris Hutton, of course, was there as, as a boss. Really, really, um, really good coach. Well thought of. How did you find him? Uh, yeah, great coach. Just like just like Greg Levine, like someone who like you know wants his player to work really hard. Yeah. And uh, like tr- tra- like you t- basically every training session is like a game, like like high intensity and uh, yeah. it, like details it's like gives you all the information that you need and it's very like like respected like manager like so yeah, yeah. Really how did you find the, the championship again was it was it similar to what you were used to or did, did, was it like another step up do you think and oh, i think it was, it was it was definitely another step up like yeah. you know like like i would say like fit up there like like you're really like in england they're, they're really fit they're really like players like look after themselves i think in a better way than that they do here in Scotland, I think. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, it was definitely a step up, but something that I enjoyed again because I think I deserve to be to be there. I think I was, I've done well for the past four years at the United, so something yeah. that I really enjoy, like working hard and trying to to make a make a name for myself. Yeah, absolutely. And you played with some cracking players, like you say, that the likes of uh, Nathan Redmond was there, Andros Townsend for it a little bit as well. Um, Nicholas Zigic and Marlon King, the, the names rang off the tongue. Some really good players at that time, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, they were very good players. You could see, like, we had um, a right back called Stephen Carr, he used to be yeah, a Newcastle Irish boy. captain. Like, you could see, like, he's there early in the morning, just doing like his preparation before training, being on the bike, the gym. Like, you, it was a big guy, opener. Like, because, I mean, in Scotland, players they don't really come that early and go to the gym before training like in england yeah. for me it was like like you say nathan redmond was like i think it was 18 at that time and 
I used to go to training early in the morning, but I remember driving into the training and asking him with like, like the balls and his boots. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm just going indoors, just practicing my left foot. And he was only 18. I was like, that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> you know, that's really, just before training, you know, you see a young boy just going and work on his weakness. So it was a big, yeah, it was definitely a big high opener again. Yeah, now, of course, you're unlucky that year to get to the playoffs and get beat by Blackpool. But in the January, I was looking at some of the results in January were, were really impressive. You went to Millwall and beat them 6 0, uh, and you went to Ellen Road and beat Leeds 4 1. What, what were these games like to play in? Um, Millwall was kind of like scary because of the yeah. fans. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know they were like this. I remember being on the bench in that game, and all I heard was just fine, just swearing and everything. I was, oh my god, just get me out of here! And, and because we scored so many goals, so the fans were waiting for us after the game. Oh, honestly, it was just, it was just mad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, Leeds was a good, good, good atmosphere, a good stadium. Very, very good. I enjoyed that game because I remember playing that game when we, yeah, we won four, with four nil. Nicolas Zigit scored an act Yeah, scored four yeah. goals. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it's got four goals actually. Yes, yeah, it's got four goals. So, yeah, no, no. yeah, we had some good results. I think we had a good season. We even in Europa League, we managed yeah. to play and we were in group stage against Maribor, Braga, yeah. and Bruges. It's so, so a very, very good game to play. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, that, that season, um, Chris Hutton would, would leave. Lee Clark comes in. Um, how did you find him? Uh, well, <laughs> <do> you know. <laughs> Uh, I didn't have a good time with him because um, when he when he came to the club, he, he well, we we kind of like spoke to each other and he said he was happy that I was here because he, I think he wanted to sign me when he was at Huddersfield before I signed yeah. for, for Birmingham. So I was happy to you know to to know that he wanted me and so I said okay good. But then I think two weeks before the the league start, he called me in his office. To, he said to me, "Oh, you know, are you going to be my sixth, the fifth midfielder? So Run just want to sign you, and Run just they, they just went to the league, league two in Scotland. Yeah, it, it, it'd be good for you to go there. And I said no. <laughs> I said no. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not. I'm going to fight for my place. Uh, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going back to Scotland, especially if Run just playing in, in League Two. If he said yeah. to me they're playing Premier League, I'll be okay. But in League Two, I said no, no. I said I'm in. I'm playing in Championship. I'm only 26. I'm not going back to Scotland and playing yeah. League Two. So I told him no. I'm not going. So he said, "Well, you're not going to play." So for the first few months, I was training with the reserve. I wasn't. I wasn't training with the first team, and uh, yeah, it was. It was difficult, but I didn't give up. I didn't give yeah. up because I managed to, to change his mind by the time of uh, January. Because the first six months I wasn't involved with the first team. I was just training with the, the youth team, playing in the wow. reserve. But then there was, yeah, I remember that time. Many players that got injured, and then we were like in January, we were playing against Leeds in the FA Cup. He had to play me. He had no one. <laughs> he had no yeah. choice. <laughs> but we played, yeah, away from home. It was it was Christmas on. It was a Christmas Eve actually. Yeah, away from home. So, yeah. and everybody thought oh, you're gonna play. I was like, nah, there's no way. And then, and then I managed to play, and I had a great game. And he came to see me. He said, look, forget about what happened before the first six months. Just focus about the next six. <laughs> and I said, yeah, just don't worry. But then, yeah, I managed to play the second part of the season. But the first part, the first six months with him, I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. I was in part of his plan. So. Yeah, it's funny. I had uh, I had Matt Lennon, who was a goalkeeper at Huddersfield. We had him on last year, and he just called him a twat. He said he ruined his career, uh, but he doesn't, didn't, he didn't like him either. I didn't like him. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say his thing now. I just yeah. I didn't have a good time. Yeah, have... he wasn't his biggest fan either. And of course, no. with, at that time, he wouldn't play for. I think he only played once when he was at the club, and it was uh, it was terrible what happened last week. Papa Buba Diop joined um, uh, Birmingham. Yeah. How did you find him, uh, Margaro? Was he hit? was he there for? He was only there for like a couple of months, wasn't he? Uh, he was. He was there the whole. Well, he, I think he signed in, in September, October. So basically the yeah. whole season. So, uh, uh, me and him were very, we became very good friends because we used to live close to each other. So we used yeah. to go to training together. I used to jump with him, and yeah, like I, I just can't believe that he passed away. Rest in peace. But yeah, no, it was honestly the most like. Nicest guy you ever meet. Like so, yeah. for such a like such a big guy, he was just so so nice. Like like very nice, very, very nice person. Yeah, yeah, it's an absolute tragedy what's happened to him. It was, yeah. Think about, of course, he was a big star for Senegal. And you'd get the call up in, in two thousand and nine for for a couple of games. How did all that come about? 
Um, well, because at, at that time I was playing for Dundee United, I was playing week in, week out, and I think I was twenty. I was twenty three, and I, I think I played more than hundred games for Dundee United. And, yeah. And I was doing well, so Senegal like national team they heard about me, so they they called me up. So yeah, we played. I remember when Craig Levin called me in his office to, to, to say to me, "I've been called up." I couldn't believe that. I was like, Are you? He's "Like I said, are you joking?" I was like, "No, no, <laughs> you've been called up." <laughs> so yeah, we played against, against Oman and we played against Iran. So I was away yeah. for two weeks. A oh, great, great time. Really enjoyed that. Like, it was a, 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 a big surprise, but something I really enjoyed, like being away, like with the national team, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I guess it's one of those where I guess you're proud to, to represent uh, Senegal, but I guess your family must have been really proud as well. Yeah, of course, because I, um, at that time uh, my dad was uh, was in Senegal, so when I got called up, obviously he knew about it because it was in the newspaper and uh, everybody yeah. were. We were from in Senegal, they were all happy, like we were celebrating like my first call up and obviously my mum and, and sister and brother they were in Paris. But um, I went back to, to Paris when I got call up because the, the training base we were we were training in Paris and then we had to flew to Oman. So I am I don't live far from the airport, so it was good. So I went home to see my mum and dad before I flew like yeah. with Senegal national team away. So no, it was a good, a great time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, of course back to the domestic scene you uh, you Get let go, be bombing, and then Dundee United come calling again. Did you have any other offers at that time, Margaro? Well, I had, I, yeah, when I was a permanent, when I left, um, I, had, I had some offer um, abroad. I had, I had an offer in Iran, but yeah. I, I wasn't, I wasn't keen because I just had, a, I just had a baby, and yeah. so I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't keen to to go there. But there was other team in England, like in a championship, who I've been talking to, but. The, the, all those deals were taking too long. I don't know what happened to my agent, but um, yeah, all those deals were taking too long. And then all of a sudden, I was without a club. Just like, you know, everybody was starting pre season. So, because my missus is from Dundee, so we, we were just staying in Dundee. And so I asked Dundee United if I could go and train with them. But I didn't want to sign at first. I just wanted yeah. to just, just stay fit. And they say, look, now you're here more than, more than two weeks. We're like, what do you think about you know coming back, signing uh, until until the end of the season? And I said, you know what, why not? Let me just go and enjoy, play the whole season, and then take it from there again. And so yeah, so I ended up signing for yeah, Dungeon United in I think it was October, uh, October, yeah. yeah. Jackie McManar here yeah, for one year. Yeah. For one, yeah. And of course, uh, you played with some talented players the first time, but that second time they had that that great batch, didn't they? At the time, I mean, Andy Robertson, uh, yeah. Brian Gold, Gary McKay, Stephen Stewart, Armstrong. What, what yeah. were these guys like? No, nah, they were good, 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 good young players. Who you, you you kind of knew most of them will, will, will go far because you, they, you could see they had the talent and they had that fearless of you know uh, I'll go out and I'll do my things <laughs> and then yeah. everything everything will happen for me. But yeah, it was it was a good changing room. They were all young and good good guys. To be fair, they were not like big heads. Who you think of yeah. because they're playing week in week out, they're getting praised. But no, they were they were honestly they were good 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 young boys. Yeah, are you surprised, especially Andrew Robertson, what he's went on to achieve with, with Liverpool and uh, obviously captain in Scotland? Is it a surprise to see how, how well he's done? Do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, it was if, if it was all like him, him, not just Chifney, Ryan Gold, Strat Armstrong, Gary Matter. They were all good players, or they were all good players. Yeah. But then, yeah, I couldn't say, yeah, definitely that uh, Andy Robertson was going to be like the player he is today. I, I couldn't say, but yeah. I knew he was a good player, but then I didn't know. You never know in football, like, if, if anybody's going to be, you know, well, yeah. good, good on him because he was someone who worked really hard. Like the way he trains is the way he plays. He still do, does the same now. The way the way he's playing now is the way he used to play. Yeah. But the United up and down, like up and down all the time, yeah. <laughs> just never stop. <laughs> so you said earlier about um, the diet, Margaro, and the Scottish players maybe don't eat as as well as maybe they should do. What what was your what's what's your diet like? Because again, we had uh, Armandoni on, and he says he <laughs> just used to eat uh, a boat like. Big buckets of chicken and all that and all that sort of stuff. His diet wasn't the best. To be fair, when I, when I when I when I moved to England and then I was living with my with my auntie and then I moved out when I was nineteen. I got my my my, my own place. Yeah. I couldn't really cook, so I used to be outside and eat takeaway food and like I put on weight. My my yeah, my diet wasn't wasn't good until I moved until I moved to Scotland and I signed for the United. Even when I was playing for Cardiff, Beef, I, I used to eat rubbish. Like I think I was <laughs> overweight. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not joking. I think I was kind of overweight when I signed for Dundee United. So when I look back at the pictures, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, my, my diet, yeah, my diet started to be better when uh, when I was basically playing for Dundee United, being full time, obviously training every day. 
and you look at other players what they eat like you're kind of like picking up their things and then you're like okay maybe that you should be eating those kind of things like on a, on a daily basis no, no, stop eating all those rubbish stuff yeah. <laughs> not about playing football you have to look after your body and obviously if your body is like in a good shape then it's better for you to to play well during the like during, like during sorry during the during the weekend so yeah. you perform definitely yeah, and um, you joined Hearts in 2014, of course, and uh, Robbie Nielsen w- w- was there at the time. That they would just been, um, they were in the, the championship at the time, I think. Um, what was, yeah. What, what was what was your, your your decision? Why did you go there? Well, because um, that year with uh, Jackie Mac- Jackie McManara, I didn't play that much with, uh, that season. I think I only only play three games. <laughs> yeah. I, I only play I only start three games with them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's my that's my daughter. <laughs> uh, yeah, only only signed three games, so and I said to myself, I need to go somewhere where I'm gonna play. I, I need yeah. to, to get to get that feeling back of you know being an, being an important player and play and enjoy my football. So um, obviously, Craig Levin took the job as a sport director, so he called me and said, look. Us like Robinson, we want you. We want you to come, and we, we have a good team, and we want we want to you know sign players who are like similar to your style of play. So so it was it was a good a good decision that I made. I think because we had a great season, <laughs> probably one yeah. of the best seasons in terms of like playing football. I enjoyed my football so much that year. It was crazy. It was, yeah, yeah. I covered Hearts a few uh, a few times that that season. You played some cracking stuff, and of course you team up again with with Prince in, in midfield. I guess that that was enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because when I when I signed, I remember Craig Levin just said to me, "Oh, what's Prince doing?" And I, I told him he's, he's without a club, so I, I gave him a call. I said, "Look, Prince, come, to, <laughs> you need to come to her. <laughs> Let's go and enjoy playing some football again and show them like, what we're all about." So yeah, no, it was it was good. We, we I mean, the, the club managed to sign some very good players, and yeah. we, we had a great we had a great team, and we were just playing football off the park. Like teams couldn't couldn't get near us. Like, yeah. We were just so good. Yeah. Yeah. And you're playing the Edinburgh Derby against Hibs as well. How did you find that game? Yeah, I enjoyed that. It was really like feisty, feisty yeah. games. Like, yeah, I heard about it, like, but until you play the game, like you're just like, wow, well, yeah, they're good, good games to play. They're very good games to play. And, yeah, actually, and, and, t- and t- Tyne Castle as well, a great stadium. But did you enjoy playing playing there for, for Hearts as well? Yeah, yeah. Even at that time when I used to play for Dun United, like Tyne Castle was probably my, my favorite stadium. I, yeah. I, I really enjoy play, like enjoy playing there like when I was playing for the United so I always enjoy yeah, going to Tank Castle but so so when I signed for them I was happy because I was like oh yeah I'm playing in my favourite stadium so <laughs> we, go, we go and enjoy <laughs> <laughs> you go up obviously you, you'd win the championship and then uh, the second season um, you joined Motherwell at the tail end of that was that just to get the, get games for Gareth or do you just want more games yeah because um, obviously we we won that we won the championship and then we went up to the Premier League so um, I was I was in a team the, the, at the start of the season when we went to the Premier League, but then uh, uh, my father passed away, so I had to I had to go obviously go away for the funeral, and then yeah. when I came back, I kind of like felt something change. I, I'm on the club, the, like the, like Robinson didn't really play me that much when I came when I came I came back from that funeral. I played three games in a row, and then after that I was in a team for like six weeks. Like wow. it was just it was just strange. I was like, oh, yeah. what's happening? Yeah, so. I had a long conversation with him, obviously, and they just signed Arnold Jum, who just, who just yeah. signed for the club. And he just started saying to me, oh, like, you know, we've got many players now, there's competition and everything. And starting, like, so December, I just knocked on the door. I said, look, if I'm not going to play like I used to play before, like, you're not going to play me, so I, I don't want to be here. I, I, need, I need to go somewhere where I want to play. So so I went on loan to Motherwell for the last six months, and yeah, just to enjoy my time again, just to you know, just to play football. Uh, I yeah. don't, I don't like being on the bench. <laughs> I don't like yeah. watching games. No, no. absolutely not. <laughs> and, and then at the end of that season, I, I moved. It's a bit left field. You go to Malaysia. Um, uh, why Malaysia? But what made you go there? Well, well the, um, the thing is, I had one more year at Hearts, and yeah. uh, so I finished my 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 loan with Motherwell. And Modell wanted me to, to stay with them the season after. They, they offered me like a two-year deal, Mark Maggie, but I told him, look, I still got one, one more year at heart and I want to go back and fight for my place because I still believe that I'm good enough to play for them. So I went back pre-season with Hart, but then uh, they changed my number. I used to be number six, and yeah. they gave me number 16. And from day one, when I walked in, like uh, on first day of pre-season, I, I saw that I said, nah, 
I'm not gonna stay. <laughs> this is not gonna happen for me. So I didn't say anything obviously to, to Robinson. I just started working hard during preseason, but then I think two weeks two weeks after Preseason, yeah, um, I got a call from an agent who just said to me, Look, we're looking for the um, uh, I like you as a player, and uh, I've, got, I've got an opportunity for you to go to Asia, like between like Malaysia or I can't remember which other country it was. And I said, well, well, if you find your club, yeah, why not? So um, I sent him my video and, and he sent it to, to the club in Malaysia, and uh, the, the, they were happy, so they sent me an offer that I couldn't basically refuse. So, yeah. so I spoke to her and I told them, and Hearts, Hearts said to me, Look, no, don't terminate your contract. Go and see what it's like over there. And yeah. then when you're there, if you like it, then you can just call us and we just terminate your contract. So so that's what I did. I just went over to have a look at obviously at the, the stadium, the training facility and meet the players and, and the manager over there. And then yeah, I enjoyed my, my few days over there. So I called Hart and I told them to terminate, terminate my contract so I could sign in Malaysia. So yeah, well, great. I had a great time there. Yeah. What are they? Are they passionate for the football? What? What's it? What's oh, it like over there? I guess it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the UK because, because it's really hot over there. So the training session, then evening, they start like um five thirty till till quarter past seven, seven thirty. Yeah. So um yeah. So and then the game the at night time nine o'clock nine o'clock. But like from six seven o'clock, the fans are already in the stadium. Oh. In the stadium. <laughs> yeah, the fans are already waiting for you to come. Right? They're they're. They love a selfie. They all and <laughs> yeah, they're honestly they're really passionate, like very very passionate. Yeah. So now it was uh, I mean, honestly I really enjoyed. It. I really enjoyed. It. And each club in in Malaysia they they allowed to have four foreigners. Yeah. And the rest they all local players. But the the football over there they they just want to attack. They're so tactic they don't know yeah. anything about that. They just, they just <laughs> yeah. You never see a game when it's like zero zero. There's always goals. <laughs> And uh, because I'm a defensive midfielder, I used to like screaming on my full back where you go and just come <laughs> stay. They you know, they, they just they just go, they just go. I'm like, oh wow, it's crazy. But now I really enjoy it. They they want to play football, but just they just want to attack, they just don't want to defend. So but it was a good good experience, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Did they speak did you always sort of speak English over there or did yeah, you have to learn English? English? Yeah, they speak, yeah, they speak English. They speak English, yeah. yeah. And and from there you went to Oman for for, for a little spell at uh yeah, what was all that about? Yeah, because the manager that um was in Malaysia uh, who, who signed me, he, yeah. he after a year in Malaysia he went to Oman. So after my two years in, in Malaysia I came back to Scotland and I wanted to to, to play in Scotland, but then like the clubs were taking too long. So my, my old manager called me, he said, look, I'm in Oman if you want to come. And I said, you know, why not? So I just, I was just went to Oman and signed one year. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's very, the, the league in Oman is very technical. The players are physical. They're, yeah. they're really aggressive. Yeah, it's really aggressive, but technical players. And it was really hot. It's just like in Malaysia, they play at night yeah. time, and they train at night time, but it was a good experience. Good, good experience. But only stay, only, I signed a year, but only stayed there six months. I only stayed yeah. there six months. Yeah. Were your family back home, Magar, or did they come with um, you? Yeah, no, my wife, my wife and kids, they they stay in Scotland. They stay in Scotland. Yeah. But they would, they, I used to like uh, I uh, I came home many times when I was away. Like, and they would come yeah. and visit me at home. So, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then you come back, of course, and, and, and rejoin Dundee United again in twenty nineteen. You just can't keep away, but I guess they give you the call, and you just can't resist. Yeah, the thing. Yeah, the, the thing is, yeah, because uh, like I say, I signed a year in Oman, and uh, we're, I mean, I was doing well. I was enjoying my football over there, and the, and then the club we were qualified in the semi final of the Omani Cup, so I was doing well. But then I had a call, obviously, from 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 Robbie saying like, you know, there's an opportunity for you to, to come back to the United, and I was like, you know, what? yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, was like, yeah it's, uh, I, I want that. I want if I can help the club, you know, to go back to the SPL, that would that would be great. You know, I, I love that club. So yeah, why not? Why not? So yeah, I ended up coming like coming back to the United for the third time. <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately, I never went up that, that that season. But then you you, you joined Falkirk, of course, in in, in 2019, where, where you are just now. And um, yeah. you enjoying your, your time there so far? Yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying my time. Like Re, Re McKinnon signed me, but then yeah. obviously he they, they sacked him after a year ago. It was I think during that time, and then Lee Lee uh, Lee Miller and David McCracken uh, took over, and it's been it's been great. It's been great. I enjoy my football, and you know we're doing well. So hopefully we can continue like this. But yeah, now I'm having a great time. Yeah, of course. Last season was a bit um, mental at the end of the season when you guys 
uh, were denied the chance to go up. But what was what what was your feelings about that one, Carol? Did you feel that it was maybe a bit unfair that you couldn't? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. To, to hand the title to Ref of us just like that, it was kind of yeah. hard for us because we were just one point behind them. There were still eight games to play and yeah. we were playing them. So it was the last game of the season at home. So we thought that we were gonna we were gonna beat them basically. So for for the yeah, for, for them to, to, to go up like this it was just hard for us to accept. But then we had to obviously move on and start from, from the beginning again and then and focus on, on this season. So not to dwell on the past and yeah, we just yeah. have to refocus and just do our best to, to get out of the or sorry, of this division. Yeah. How did you find the whole uh, coronavirus stuff when the, obviously the games get cancelled and you only started playing again in October time? How difficult was that not to even train or anything like that? Yeah, at the beginning, obviously, when the when the first when the first obviously when we first heard about the coronavirus, we were not. I think people were not taking it like seriously at the beginning. Yeah. But then, Obviously, when the game got cancelled, and then they were saying, "Oh, we, maybe we'll be off for two weeks," and then from two weeks it went to like a month, and then from a month it went to two months, and then all of a sudden it was just like we're in lockdown for four months. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it was, yeah, it wasn't. It was, it was. I mean, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But um, I mean, we just we just have to, to to just be careful, obviously, and just try to do the right things. But um, I'm lucky because obviously I've got my wife and my two kids. Yeah. And what I'm saying is like a, a nice place. So we we I mean. We we managed to cope with it, I would say, like you know. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been crazy times, and of course, um, at, at Falkirk at the moment, what's 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 the aim then for you yourself, Margaret, to, to keep playing for a good few years yet? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't see myself stopping stopping right now. I still feel good, even though I'm 35. People probably think, oh, it's 35, it's finished, but. I still feel good physically, yeah. like uh, I'm keeping up with the the young generation. So, so, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so far so good. I'm I'm doing well. So I'm hoping uh, as long as I can stay fit, I think I'm, I think I'm fine to to carry on playing for for a few more years. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you, you played Rangers recently as well. Um, I think they're uh, they're, they're sweeping everyone away at the moment. But what was it like to play it, against them last week? I, it it was good. It was good. You could see the players, the, the like Manchester players, they're enjoying their football, especially playing for Steven Jar. I think everybody would, but um, like they're working really hard for each other. Like you could see the movement from the players; they just know what they're doing. And I think I think they're going. Well, they're having a great season, but I think they can they can win something this season definitely if they carry on like this. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, yourself away from football, you've got your own um, you set up your own football academy as well. Can you tell us a wee bit about that? Yeah, it's just um just a football academy like special uh, one to one session. I do it like yeah. every every Sunday from from ten o'clock till five o'clock. So I've got a few clients, and I just want to try to help them like working on the on the technical stuff. So because I, I feel like we like in in England and Scotland we f- we focus on players to be like physical. They they want them to be physical and strong and you know aggressive. But what about the technique of like yeah. being able to control the ball and pass the ball? That, that's the way I, I've learned to play football from a young age. It's all about the technique, control, pass, and the rest will come later. You know, your yeah. physicality, your aggressivity, everything will come naturally, will come later. But that's what I, I want to help those new generation, generation just to go and enjoy football. There's nothing better than being able to, you know, control the ball and pass the ball and, you know, being able to be positive and dribble. And yeah. I, I think that's, that's, what, that's my football. That's the way I see it I, I, for me. I just yeah because I had a problem when I was young when I moved to England people used to say to me oh no you're too small to play central midfielder yeah. you're not tall enough well yeah. I'm sorry but <laughs> when I'm playing against any any guys that are bigger than me sometimes they can't even get near me so yeah. so it's just like you know it's uh, for me this yeah they need to because when you look at other countries like Spain you see all the midfielder they're not they're not big they're not strong but yeah. they're very good on the ball <laughs> so that's why. I want to try to change that that mentality of of thinking just of the, you know the physicality and the the aggressivity of the game. It's more focused on like technical stuff. So that's that's the main thing about my uh, football academy. It's about being able to control, pass the ball, and being positive on the ball. Yeah. Magic. Now, uh, yeah, a website that people if they want to get in, in yeah. touch with you and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got my website set up. Yeah, it's more it's more Gary Gomi sat me. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've got my website. Yeah. Superb magic. Well, Margaro, it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you and um, hearing about your Thank career. Thank you very much for, for coming on the podcast. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. It's nice talking to you and hopefully we can talk again sometimes. <laughs> <laughs>